How's it? Welcome along to Basil's Garage. Uh, we, we're back on the Cub Cadet build. Uh, we're still working on the chassis and the stiffening of it up at the moment. So um, I'll show you what we've got on with uh, since last time we're here. So last time we were here, we basically ran these two beams uh, down the inside. Uh, since then what I've done is I've added in these pieces and this piece and I've just tapped in the piece across the back here so I can't take these out anymore because they sit in all around the chassis. What I've also done is I've put the axle in and I've measured the centre of it and then I've made sure that if this is sitting exactly central so measured from there to the outside, measured from there to the outside so I know this is sitting exactly central. Then what I've done is I've stuck some wood underneath here and I've got the old trusty level out and I've stuck it on here and I've made sure that that's level um, that way. What I've also done is I've stuck some wood underneath here and adjusted it up so I can check that it's level this way as well. So sitting on there, that's also level. So what it means is I've now got a completely level platform to work with, even though these inner strengthening pieces are not level, the chassis is sitting level. So what I do is grab a bit of steel, stick it across here, just to double check that we've got nice and level, uh, which we have. And then the same with this way, uh, I checked it before it's nice and level. So then what I've done, with that being level, this being level, I've now put the front end in and I've clamped it in here. And then what I did was I measured, again, the distances to here to make sure that it was completely central. And then I also checked that this was level. So I put the clamps on and then I checked that it was level, uh, which gives me the right level there and I did the other side and I've just tack welded it in a couple of places just to tack it in place and then check that it was all okay so to recap everything is sitting level so it means that whatever we do with the level is going to sit to the same amount now what I've done is I've tapped this in place I've got it even so just to confirm the geometry is pretty good what I did was I've got the center piece here so with the center here I'm just going to get a tape measure I'm going to put the tape measure over the top of it and I'm going to measure up to the centre of this bolt hole and that's basically 91193 and I'm going to do exactly the same from there to there and it is exactly 1193 so what that tells me is that this axle and this bit here is perpendicular and sitting as square as we can possibly get to the chassis so it's not going to crab it's not going to do anything silly. It's basically square and straight as best as we can for what we need to do for here. So, um, yeah, once we've got that all sitting square, now the next part is to check it out and we'll end up um, tweaking these pieces to get our Ackerman right. Okay? Okay, so uh, we had this all sitting flat, level, all happy. We've got the center of the axle. So now we're going to set up the steering to get the Ackerman. Now to me, it's quite an important part of it to get the Ackerman sorted out. Um, so what we have to do is we put a string line from the center of the pivot down through to the center of the axle and then back up to the center. Now ideally what we want to try and do is, is that with these arms parallel, this point here needs to be moved across so it lines up with that string line, okay? And the same on this side. So we're going to eyeball that as being straight and we want to move this across to the air. So the way that we do it is I measure down about 30 mil because that's a good sort of number. Put a line across there. I'm going to get my angle grinder out. I'm going to cut through here and then I'm going to bend this piece in so it's basically in line with that. So I'll do that now. Put my eyes on. Put my ears on. Get my little grinder. So then what I need to do is I need to bend it across. So um, I've got a couple of bits of steel here. So I'll put one on there and one on here. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a bend and see how we are with that now. So that's straight. So no, it's going to come in some more. There's a bit more of a bend on here. Right, let's see what that's like. That's pretty bloody close. We'll go a little bit more. Um, a little 
little bit more just to make sure. So that's pretty bloody good now. So that's now set up this, so it's on the angle of that. So what I'll do is I'll do the same on that side, and then I'll take them out completely. I'll double check those angles are 100%, so I'll match them up to the two so they're both the same. And then I will weld some strengthening in here, weld it up completely, and then um, that will get that part sorted. Uh, and then that will give us our Ackerman, uh, ready to go so we get the inside wheel turning more than the other side wheel as we turn into the corner and for me That's an important part of it um, So yeah, and then from here on in we'll move in and we'll start looking at um, Doing the rest of the bracing and maybe fitting in the uh, running wheel drive as well Alrighty, so we welded these up uh, Bent them in where they should have been fully welded them up. So they're all good to go So what I've decided to do in the front of here is um, with the tie rod end um, I've made up some little spaces um, and what's going to happen is those spaces are going to sit on top of here and that's going to make this come in just above the top of here so even at the lowest down it's still got a little bit of clearance there and I'm going to work out some sort of system here that I'm going to end up doing it so this will be very similar to my last mower and the way that we do it but this is going to be a, a give me the ability to, to keep the above header the cylinder head comes up over the top of here and this will clear it so that won't be a problem so that's how we're going to do the front end we'll do a bit more on that later um, what I've also done is um, I've got about an 8mm plate here and um, I cut the 8mm plate to size and then um, uh, made a hole in there for the right angle drive, drilled the holes for the mounting and so now um, the right angle drive sits in here. So of course obviously I made sure that this was all sitting level, that's level, that's level, so it's sitting square, it's sitting level, I've checked all that sort of stuff, so that's now ready to bolt into here. Um, what I'm also going to do is um, I like to give these a bit of strengthening. So what I've done is I'm going to make up a, a little um, little frame, basically, that's going to sit on here. Um, that will sit there, that will sit there, and then that will sit there. Now I'll weld this frame up, and then I'll drill the holes, and when I bolt it down, this frame will hold the whole thing together and give extra support to these side bits here. So it'll make it much stronger and hopefully not fall apart. Um, I'll probably also um, maybe drill a hole in the top of here to uh, check the oil level or to top up the oil. Um, so the other thing we've done is um, with the steering. So I've cut this out with a hole saw. So I've now got the uh, bottom half of the steering. So this is where the steering shaft's going to come on and stick out and do the steering. And then this now goes the bearing, bolts in here, should line up with the holes that we've drilled. And it means that this is now enabling us to have the steering link it through to the front here and work out that part. So um, that's probably um, enough of Baz's Garage for this time. Um, and um, next video, we'll have this welded up, ready to go. Uh, we'll get the steering bits done um, and then we'll flip it all over and we'll have a look underneath what we need to do for strengthening the underneath of it. So until next time, Baz's Garage.